the people that are occupying the land of Palestine today will endeavor to recreate the temple. When it is recreated, they will try to move to their next ambitions, which is the greater Israel. And we have a hadith with regards to this, that the building up of the Bayt al-Maqdis will culminate in the destruction of Medina. And the ruin of Medina will spell out the start of the wars of Armageddon. Of the things that the Israelites are trying to do, or at least some of them, their belief is that if they become worthy of the Messiah, mm -hmm. the Messiah will come back. So part of the things that will make them worthy is if mm -hmm. they rebuild the Temple of Solomon. Nice. The Israelites, or our Jewish cousins, mm -hmm. are bent on rebuilding the Temple of yes. Solomon. And we have a hadith with regards to this, that Umran Bayt al-Maqdis kharab yathrib, that the building up of the Bayt al-Maqdis will culminate in the destruction of Medina. When you try to marry this hadith and the beliefs of the other faiths and also see what is happening mm -hmm. on the ground today, one of the possible scenarios becomes that the Zionist people that are occupying the land of Palestine today will endeavor to recreate the temple. And when it is recreated, they will try to move to their next ambitions, which is the greater Israel. Because notice that the Messiah to them is a global king, like he will reign over the world. The construction within Jerusalem will prompt the destruction of Medina. So this is something like very new. If you can walk us through this, what exactly is this referring to? The hadith is found in the authentic books of hadith. Umran Bayt al-Maqdis, Kharab Yathrib. Kharab Yathrib, Khuruj al-Malhama. Wa Khuruj al-Malhama, Fathu al-Qastantiniya. Wa Fathu al-Qastantiniya, Khuruj al-Dajjal. So the hadith says that building up of Bayt al-Maqdis. Bayt al-Maqdis is the temple of Jerusalem or the mosque in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. if you like. Literally, Bayt means house, yes. Maqdis from Muqaddas, as in the holy house, mm -hmm. referring to Masjid al-Aqsa. So the rebuilding of that will culminate in the destruction or the ruin of Medina. The ruin of Medina will spell out the start of the wars of Armageddon, Malhama, the great wars. The wars of Armageddon will result or culminate in the opening or the victory of Constantinia. There is a view that Constantine had two cities. One was Constantinople that he built, and the other one before this was modern Rome. So irrespective of how you look at it, the city of Constantine will fall open, and then that will bring in age of the Dajjal. But it is linked, I believe, on a practical level to the story of greater Israel because the building of the temple will mean that they have got rid of all resistance around Jerusalem and they have succeeded in building the temple. Mm -hmm. And destroying Masjid al-Aqsa. Yes, and then with this will come a new phase, this is my calculation, that they will try to create this notion of greater Israel, which to them extends far beyond its current borders. And as part of that, Muslim cities near and around those areas will be attacked and destroyed. And we have a hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he said, that the last city that they will be able to destroy will be the city of Medina. So we know that it will be harmed and it will be destroyed. We've mentioned a lot about the greater Israel. We've seen recently Israeli soldiers in Gaza have badges with a map of the greater Israel and they're calling for potentially taking over parts of Jordan, parts of Syria. We saw the finance minister deliver a talk with a map of the greater Israel on before. this podium. So walk us through this. What is the fascination behind it? What are they trying to do and why? Greater Israel started like its inception, you know, when the British mandate came into effect in 1918. Everyone knew you hear this on Churchill's actual words, that they will not be kept local at that stage. They will expand, they will push the Arabs out. So it's understood at the political world level, amidst the great powers, that this will eventuate. Mm -hmm. So they are driven by not 1948 borders, not 1967 borders, they are driven by greater Israel borders, which comes out in the statement of some settlers, or certain rabbis, politicians. So the next step of this greater Israel is the map you see on the podium of the finance 
finance minister when he spoke and you see it on the shoulders of soldiers and it goes way beyond yes. the river takes up pretty much all of Jordan and parts of Syria mm. but even that is not the final version the final version if they end up creating the Israel that they envision or that their book says they had at some time access to it will go from the Euphrates to the Nile and even that is on record as some of their rabbis and their leaders we will take everything from yes. Euphrates including Mecca Medina yes. but the Prophet ﷺ told us that the last destruction will be Medina and then the other hadith gives an example of what will happen how the destruction mm -hmm. will look like so the Prophet ﷺ said you will leave Medina vacate Medina when it is the best it has ever been so I read it as the buildings will be intact the hotels will be there the orchards will be the best it has been so you ask yourself the logical question that why have they left Medina because mm -hmm. number one the love of the Muslims for the city of Medina is self-evident yes. we travel thousands of miles to be there even for a few days so no Muslim would forsake mm -hmm. it naturally and then secondly there's no problem the infrastructure is still there mm -hmm. orchards are there and another hadith says mm -hmm. you will leave it and its fruits are hanging low as in the orchards are all fine for 40 years why are they leaving there's another hadith which gives a hint of what might happen possible scenario and the Prophet ﷺ says you will leave Medina when it is the best it has ever been and you will leave it for the beasts and the birds and then the hadith continues that the last two to enter the city will be two shepherds from Muzayna and he specifies the tribe and they will come with their flock into the city when they come into it they will see it vacant deserted there's another reading of this hadith as in it could possibly mean that when they come into it their animals will become wild like the tamed sheep will become wuhush and by the time they leave the city of Medina and reach Thanayat al-Wada you know the limit towards which the guests were taken to in the olden days like before they mm -hmm. left the city they used to be walked out this is called Thanayat al-Wada the place of goodbyes point of farewell when they reach there both of them will fall down dead so if you think about it and analyze it the city is vacant so much so that the hadith says that the wolf will come and urinate on the member and no one will be there to stop it when the two people have entered it either somewhere during the time or towards the end of its time and they walk out of it barely a few kilometers they both fall down dead so upon thought and reflection a possibility is that there will be either chemical warfare used onto the city as in the air will become toxic poisonous or there's a biological specific uh, towards uh, humans specific towards and, and humans or a neurological one in which an agent is used that drives things crazy and humans to death because the animals possible reading is that they become beasts so they mm -hmm. become untamed or crazy so that is the culmination of the Umran or Bayt al-Maqdis and Kharab or Yathrib and this would obviously then trigger, you mentioned the battles of Armageddon, like post-apocalyptic wars, and yeah. then the opening of Constantinople, and then the arrival of the Antichrist. That's right. So Medina will be the turning point. And this turning point will culminate in the Great Wars. The destruction of Medina will result in the awakening of the Muslim to the point where they will gather around righteous leaders. So the Prophet ﷺ informed us, this matter will not end until 12 of guided Khulafa have come into existence. There's obviously different beliefs on that, that they come from the time of Abu Bakr and you just count 12 there or you look for 12 righteous people in mm -hmm. Muslim history or will they come as a cluster at the end of time? My belief is that they will come as a cluster at the end of time because the Prophet ﷺ, when he mentions the hadith says the matter will not end as in towards the end of time this is what will happen. So when the destruction of the last city of Islam happens as in Medina people will gather around the leader in the Hijaz and 12 such leaders will come one after the other so an age will come of Khilafat again that age I believe will start when the last city as the Prophet promised because no more cities of Islam will be damaged after this and then the 12 rightly guided will come one after the other so you will understand that the Ummah is in tatters so they will rebuild and it will take at least 40 years because Medina will be in ruin for 40 years so at least 40 years of that will happen and then 
Medina will become populated again. Mm-hmm. And then the Dajjal comes eventually. And when the Dajjal comes, Medina is full again. And he will not be able to enter Medina. Medina That's will right. Be a safe haven so what time. it shows is a long time will pass. And this is where the 12 can fit in the 12 rulers, the culmination of which will be the Mahdi. The last of the 12 mm-hmm. leaders that will come will be the Mahdi.